I think we're live. Hello, everyone. We're a little early today. We are. Yep, we're live. Okay. But we'll wait till, we usually wait till 5.30 to start the crime. Yeah. So people rolling in or not, watching it off of live. Got some good crime stories today, and we got barbecue. We got barbecue on our first murder she ate, actually. I called it audible. We already had plans. He was going to do steak. I was going to do ground beef. And then I was at the grocery, and I was like, I need barbecue. And he's like, get it. So we did it. Impulse. Yep. How's the audio? So here's the barbecue we got. We got fatty brisket and pulled pork. And then I made some mushrooms and onions. I was looking for a side. I got a little cup of her mushrooms to sample. And then I have my barbecue sauce, G Hughes. I got some of this I'm gonna have. Sauerkraut is ginger turmeric sauerkraut. And I might grab some pickles. And then we have some Comte cheese on the side. We might. I got a keto bar for dessert. Also taste test. And yeah, depending on how I feel, I might just go, oh my gosh. I might just go mostly meat. But we got this block of cheese too. And if you know anything about Mega, she has no control over her, what are they called? Her limbs. Yeah. So what's up guys? Oh, and a, a pro tip for if you go into a barbecue joint, usually they'll sell the rub and you can see if there's sugar in it. Mm -hmm. Or you can just ask the people that usually take great pride in their barbecue rubs. You can say like, is there any sugar in it? Brown sugar. They'll and, say no or yes. And then we just get everything without the sauce. Yep. Ready? Pretty or much what? it. Okay. Any good questions? Hi from Oklahoma. What's going on? First time chatting. You are terrific. Thank you. Eating, Eating sausage, sausage puffs. puffs. What are sausage puffs? That sounds delicious. You mean like sausage meatballs? Puffs? Like puff pastry with sausage in it? I don't really like sauerkraut that much, but I know it's healthy, so I try That's to That's really it. good. This kind's pretty good, yeah. I think it's, it's super delish. Very flavorful. So I just have like a few forkfuls before dinner. That has no control over his mouth. Just kidding. Can I have some? Yeah. This one's really good. Ginger turmeric is a great flavor combination, guys. Makes for a great tea as well. Hello from Detroit. How's it going? What kind of pickles do you use and where do you get them from? We like these kind, it's called Grillo's Fresh Pickles. Uh-huh, we get them, we've seen them at Publix, Whole Foods. Basically all pickles are good, there's just some that are sweet that use sugar, but other than those, they're all fine. What's the name of the barbecue sauce? G Hughes. G Hughes is getting a lot of play on our channel and he's not paying us. But yeah, it's G Hughes. It has sucralose in it, some people don't like using that. It's but not the best ingredients. Yeah, it's not the best ingredients, but it is good tasting. I haven't tried it in a while. Maybe I'll try it today. That's the one thing I just like condiments sometimes. Well, except for like mayo, like if it has canola oil, sunflower oil, I don't eat it. But like low carb ketchup, low carb barbecue sauce, those are just two things that I just, I, I sacrifice quality. We did not do a murder she ate last week. We were traveling. Mm -hmm. We're glad to be back. Mm-hmm. Traveling is the worst. Um, I'm having a hard time getting in my fats. Any suggestions? Starting off with a bulletproof coffee, like ensures. If you don't drink coffee, you could do decaf tea. That's what I've been doing. You can do bulletproof broth. Um, and then also like fat bombs. But like, just if you are tracking, I feel like you are because you know you're not getting enough fat. Just upping the fat per meal, right? So like adding extra butter if you're cooking some veggies or steak, adding extra mayo to your chicken salad, egg salad. Can you make a video on all the difficult ingredient names we should look out for? And we're gonna start the crime in like eight minutes at 5.30. Um, difficult ingredient names to look out for. I mean, as long as you're not eating like packaged stuff, then, then there's way less concern, but like dextrose, maltodextrin, maltitol, Isomalto oligosaccharide fiber, that's a big one. Those are like the big dogs, really. But there's a lot more, there's like 20 probably. Yeah, depends on how like down the hole you wanna go with your like, out of the quality. Cause a lot of people like to stay away from sucralose, aspartame, like a modified cornstarch is on a lot, on a lot of things that you wouldn't expect. Um, I'm going with a lot of onions in this. 
You can take my mushrooms and I'll take your onions. I don't like a lot of onions. I like a lot of onions. Here. No, it's fine. No, no, no. I just want these. Okay, I'm eating it. No. Oh. Is it good though? Yeah. What else you guys got? Where do you get the sauerkraut? I got this from a local farm. It's a Georgia brand. Oh no, I don't know. This one's not the Georgia brand. We get this really good coconut milk kefir from, mm. from this company. It's called Ancient Awakenings in Georgia. It's delicious. How is your sleep efficiency? Um, it's been pretty off for both of us because we've been traveling and staying in a hotel, Airbnb, you know, being three hours off. But when I'm at home, my sleep's pretty solid, I feel like. Yeah, I, Meg is a sleep master. Just like if there was a job you could get paid for, that was... You should be like a mattress I'm model. the LeBron of sleeping, is basically what it is. Maggie Comel, thank you so much for the donation. $2. Um, this is a serving fork. Okay, we don't just use our own forks. We could do that too, but I thought this would be better. Okay. Brisket is my fave. I'm so tired on keto. I mean, maybe, are you eating enough? Where are your electrolytes at? Drinking water, upping your fat. There's so many things you could play around with to up your energy levels. Um, I know when I don't eat enough personally, I'm more tired. Yeah, especially if you're you just starting. No. no. And what I like to do when we have leftovers, because we're probably not going to eat all this. Make a... An omelet the next morning with the brisket. That's why I got a pound of the brisket, because I knew you liked it. Thank you. I like the pulled pork a lot, to be honest. And I like to add some fat when I'm just doing barbecue, so I'll have like a little bit of butter with it or this ghee. I cooked the veggies in quite a bit of fat, some tallow. So what's your case today? What's it called? Um, I keep wanting to put this fork in my mouth and I'm like, oh, we have a serving fork. That's a serving fork. fork. <laughs> it's Paulette Gabera Ferra, so baby Paulette. Whoa. Paulette. Oh, it's a baby? No, it's a four-year-old. Oh, it's a baby. A disabled four-year-old, so yeah, very baby. I feel like you, when I say disabled four-year-old, everyone's like, parents did it, you know? That's, that's my immediate thought. Yeah. Where are your lives been? We've been traveling the last week, so we'll be back at it starting soon here. And then as far as YouTube goes, we're only going to be, no, not YouTube. As far as Sunday cook-alongs go, we'll be doing those every other Sunday. Since we have MSA every week, we do Instagram live in the morning every morning. So we don't need like a million videos from us. The chicken crust was a huge hit with my weight loss group. Oh, that's great to hear. Hi, I skip breakfast and don't feel hungry until I get home at 6 p.m. That's great. See you at 6 p.m. then. Try doing that yeah. for a while. Do OMAD, see how you feel. Yeah. Let's go to Costco's. Just right now, you want to just do a group trip? Last time Matt went to get the brisket and um, they started cutting up lean brisket and he was too nervous no. to ask them to cut fatty. It wasn't lean. That was the fatty one. No, it was super it just lean. Was, I know it was lean, but that's what they grabbed. You told me you they were cutting up lean. No, I said I want fatty, but mm -hmm. it just wasn't that fatty. Hmm. And then, quick story. Today I was in line getting all the food, and there was like a kid, probably our age, in front of me. And so like I automatically just start talking to people because we're both waiting in line quietly. So I was like... I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But um, I was like, oh, what do you get it? The brisket? The brisket's really good. And he was like, yeah, it is really good. I'm not sure yet, though. And I was like, but do you get the fatty brisket? Because that's where it's at. And he's like, no, I do the lean. And I was like, what? You can't do the lean. Like, the fat's the delicious flavor. He's like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be, like, a little healthy. And then he was called up to the counter. So... He was like really battling with what he wanted. And then he was like, I'll, I'll do chicken. I'll do chicken today. And then he turned back to me. He's like, you know, chicken's healthy. At least I can tell myself that. Right. And then 
he got a chicken sandwich and then like a side of beans and whatever. And I was like, you, why'd you get the chicken? You should just gone for the brisket. If you're gonna like get the beans and the bread and all that stuff, get the delicious meat. Cause the chicken there is not that good. I'm gonna be honest. Um, yeah. But it was like, it's funny, like what people think if they just get the healthy meat, then that makes up for all the other shit they're eating, you know? It's like drinking, eating a bucket of fries with a Diet Coke. It's like, just get the Coke. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, the Diet Coke. People okay. try to yeah, compensate. Yeah, yeah. Um, how was Los Angeles? It was good. We're going to have a video coming from that soon. I'm just going to get around to editing it tomorrow, probably. The weather was horrendous yeah. our entire trip. Torrential downpour one day. Our flight got delayed from Los Angeles to LA, or Los Angeles to SF, because there was like a hurricane warning. Primal Kitchen now has ketchup. Have you tried it? I haven't. I'm not. I don't do ketchup that much. Um, so I just yeah, I'm barbecue or, or soy mayo. Huh? Miley. People hate when Miley oh does God. this. She's like she just stepped on the cheese. Um. Can who, get, can who get take you out of ketosis? I don't think so, right? I well, don't there's know, like though. really sweet. There's sugar flavors. and stuff in them, I think. I would just stick with like mint or classic. I don't know what happens when you're like burning sugar and inhaling it. Does that? I have no idea. I mean, what what happens with drugs? You still get the effect, right? When you smoke it, as opposed to like shoot it, as opposed to you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would imagine there's something there, but just I would just stick to classic flavors, not sweet ones. It's 5.30. You Perfect. starting? Yeah. I'm always starting. I'm the closer. Coffee is for closers. I don't get that. What does that mean? It's from a movie. I forget the name of it. It was a really famous movie. Um, the guy comes in to teach the sales team how to close and he's, someone goes to get coffee. He's like, put that coffee down. Coffee is for closers. Oh, you can so you can't get coffee, coffee unless you're a closer. ABC, always be closing. Okay. What's the name of that movie, guys? Someone knows it in here for sure. Someone knows it, yeah. What? Um, no, it's... What is it called? Glengarry Glen Ross. Yeah, that's what it is. Really good movie. Oh, I just opened a new one of these today, and now I just opened another new one by accident. This is who I live <laughs> with. He left... We were at an Airbnb this weekend, and we borrowed their umbrellas, and he left the umbrella in the uber it's like this is not your stuff you accidentally <laughs> and then he also ruined their like furnace i didn't ruin it i tried defrosting mega socks on the furnace and the sock melted into the furnace i was like ruin our stuff but not other people's stuff um but ghee lasts forever so that's okay yeah okay we're gonna start so mine's very sad and i was like eating while i was researching and it was like sickening you know when it's what like so I was eating cheese, Brazil nuts, and tomatoes. I like to make a little snack plate when I'm doing things like this. Um, okay, so this is the death of Paulette Gabera Farah. Sorry if I messed that up. So this was, this happened all in Mexico. So everything like out there is in Spanish. Oh, it's Mexico, not yeah. US? No, not US, Mexico. Okay. Um, oh yeah, our first international, okay. Um, so Paulette was born on July 20th, 2005 at only 25 weeks to Lizette and Mar Mauricio. 25 weeks. What's normal? Uh, like f almost 40, 37 Oh my to gosh. 40. Yeah. So she's like barely surviving. Very then. premature. Um, so, and she was their second daughter. She was, uh, yeah, second daughter. The first was also Lizette and the mom's Lizette. So we're, when we reference the younger one, we'll say little Lizette. She and Paulette weighed one pound, seven ounces, and her parents were told that she would never walk, never talk. What? Yeah. One pound, seven ounces? You've never heard of that? Like, no. Like, babies born that small? Yeah. Very premature. Um, sad. But she actually eventually did learn to walk by, like, uh, horse therapy, but she was always needed to have an aid while she was walking, and it was only a couple steps at a time. She also, Wait, did you say horse therapy? Like, yeah. What's that? Like, you know, you work with animals and it, it helps with children, like through therapy. So like dog therapy, like horses. Oh. So like riding the horses, it just like, it gets the kids in, involved. Okay. Um, so she eventually learned to walk a little and she also had a small vocabulary, very unexpected. So she could say mom, dad, water, the basics, but she could never really string together a full sentence. 
Why was she so premature? Was, was What's up with the parents? I don't know. Sometimes, like, maybe there's an emergency. You know, something happens with the mom that they need to deliver the baby. It just happens. I'm sure you have a lot of friends that are premature, as you don't know. Premature births? I was three weeks early. Yeah, Kelsey was, like, ten weeks. She was, like, five pounds. Whoa. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. Back to the case. So, Paulette had around-the-clock care by two nannies who were sisters, and those two sister nannies, they lived in the house with the entire family. So, they took care of both the children, they got them up, they got them dressed, that was their job. So, is this family well off then? Yeah, so this, oh. they both came from, the mom and dad came from wealthy families, and so they were well off. They lived in a really nice neighborhood, a nice building with security, with cameras, so like, you know, really hard for people to get in and out, I would imagine. Um, and she was found dead on March 22nd, 2010 in Mexico. And her death became like a huge media storm in Mexico. The entire country was involved. Everyone was like, you know, putting like, they, it was just like a really sad thing that happened, right? Um, she was young, she was disabled. She was four years old at the time. And there was no like, way that there was like no way this could have happened how would she die what's the cause of death yeah we're gonna get to that okay so on sunday march 21st the um no wait she wasn't found on march 22nd i'm sorry timeline gotta get that timeline straight okay on march 31st not 22nd she was found dead okay so on sunday march 21st so this is 10 days prior the dad and both daughters, uh, Lizette, little Lizette and Paulette, return home from a weekend trip at 9 p.m. at night. The mom had also been away, but she was away with friends in Los Cabos, but she returned to the home at the, sa at the same time. So just the babies there with the caretakers? No, I told you, the dad took the daughter, the dad came home with the daughters. Both daughters, okay. Yeah, you gotta be listening. Um, the mom even recalled putting uh, putting Paulette into bed, tucking her in, giving her a kiss and saying she'd see her in the morning. And again, it's important to know, wealthy family, really well secure neighborhood building. The next morning on March 22nd, the nannies get little Lizette up and uh, ready for school. So she was older, so she goes to school earlier, so this is their normal routine. They get her up, they get her dressed, they take her to the bus stop, and then they come back for Paulette. But Paulette's not in her bedroom, she's not in the bed. Um, and again, remember, she can't really walk. She's not strong. She's smaller than a normal four-year-old, right? Okay. Um, so there's lots of cases like this, and it's always the family, I feel like. Okay. So the nannies panicked, obviously, and they start searching the apartment, and they call the parents back home. The parents, Both the parents are aware. Um, the nannies even talk to the neighbors, and they start to search the entire building. Because, like, she couldn't have gotten, if she got out, she couldn't have gotten past, like, the building, I would imagine. Does she sleep, like, how old is she at this point? Four? Four. Does she sleep in a crib and stuff? No, she sleeps in a weird setup bed. We'll talk about the setup of her bedroom. Okay. So, when the parents arrive home, oddly, they don't join in on the search. The mom's sitting at the kitchen table with coffee, and the dad is, like, kind of searching just around the apartment. He doesn't leave the apartment. He's kind of searching. It's weird. Um, and he calls his sister to let her know um, what happened. And it's actually Mauricio's sister, the dad's sister, not even the parents who call the police to say our daughter's missing. Weird. Um, so that was my, obviously I was like, okay, they did it. Like that was my initial point of like, this is the parents doing. That has to be the default setting. Yeah. So to start. On, on March 25th, three days later, the attorney general makes a press conference um, to bring attention to the case. So like there's billboards of little uh, of Paulette up everywhere. Everyone knows about this case. It's really just spread throughout the country. And the police are coming in and out of the apartment and Paulette's room to just really make sure there was no breaking and entering. So they're checking the windows. They're like checking for evidence, like to see if there's any breaking and entering. And they, you know, they find out that, you know, they realize, sorry, that there is no evidence of this. Okay. Um, but they don't search for the girl. They really just care about was there a breaking and entering. Yeah, they don't search for Paulette, really. They don't make an effort to, like, search the building or, like, start a case of, like, who could, who could have taken her, what happened, right? Yeah. Um, and they're not, like, suspecting the parents or the nannies at this time either. 
which is weird. Over the next several days, hundreds of officers, detectives, forensic officers, they go in and out of Paulette's room, but it's never like labeled as a crime scene. So like everything all these people are doing is like obstructing, obstructing any sort of evidence that could have been there. And so it's like, obviously it's being butchered at this point, which is very sad. Um, the family, go ahead. So in like all cases, basically every case we tell, the cops always do bad stuff. But I think it's just because situations like this arise so infrequently that they don't really know what they're supposed to do. Well, this is also like a wealthy family in Mexico. Like, I'm just trying to think outside of the box. Like, they, I don't know. Like, I feel like if they weren't wealthy, maybe they'd point fingers immediately. So I can see that what I'm thinking is like uh, people in our scenario, just like, you know, middle class people where like the, the girl is really a financial and, and like a time strain on your life. I can see there being some motive for murder there, but like these people just have caretakers watching her. They pay yeah. them money, assuming their their businesses aren't going under or anything. I don't really see too much motive. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. So the mom, okay, so the entire family actually, they do media interviews. They're in Pollock's room. They're talking to the news and she's even like sitting on the bed and talking about how sweet Paulette is showing drawings. But she never like sheds a tear. She doesn't even ever seem very upset. According to like the footage of the news, she seems like more nervous than anything, which is odd. Um, speaks to a lot. And then the case actually takes a turn when the attorney general goes on TV for a press conference stating that there are four main suspects, mom, Lizette, dad, Mauricio, and the two nannies. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So they were all detained in a hotel for a while. They couldn't leave um, just to figure out what was going on with this case. On March 31st, the day after everyone is detained, Paulette's body is found unexpectedly in her bedroom. What? They notice a weird smell. So they start to search and she is wedged at the bottom of the bed between the mattress and the bed posts. Her, bot, her tiny little four-year-old body is just wedged in between the post and the Okay, so mattress. that is just horrible police work, first off, yeah. right? So we'll talk about, you know, the ins and outs of that. But I just want to do, I want to point out... Um, so it's, it's maybe feasible that she could have done that herself? We'll talk about that. But probably not, So there, I guess? there's video, and I didn't know, like, people, <laughs> countries did this. It wouldn't happen in America, but there's video on TV of her body being discovered. Whoa. And I watched it and I shouldn't have watched it because like, you see the full on body. Yeah. Like the medical examiners, they're taking off the bed sheets. How it, many days after she died? Um, she died on, well, we don't know. After she disappeared, she disappeared on the 22nd. Okay. So like nine days after she disappeared, her body is found in her bedroom mm. where hundreds of officers were going in and out even weirder people slept in the bed like family members mm. so when you go when you sleep in a hotel bed when you sleep in someone else's bed i mean it was a king size bed so it was pretty big but like as a full grown adult like your feet would touch all of it you pull up the covers right so she was like it was like tucked under her body it was jammed in there yeah but like still Someone, you think someone... I mean, so it. the one thought is maybe her body wasn't there all this time. It was planted after the fact. Yeah, that is a thought. Okay. So uh, following the smell, the forensics team starts to pull out the sheets from the bed and they are covered in what looks like blood, but it's more likely decomposition fluid. Um, that's what the consensus is. And they found her body wrapped under several blankets. So... Um, Every also to know every night when the nannies put uh, put P to bed, they would place two massive body pillows on each side of her to make sure she wouldn't fall out. So like bigger than her body, there's two on each side. Okay. And the conclusion was that P had somehow wriggled her way, Paulette, sorry, wriggled her way down to the bottom of the bed and wedged herself in between the bed and the bedpost and asphyx asphyxiated to death. So with that theory, I mean, she's not just going to asphyxiate to death, like 
accidentally against the bed, you have the will to survive. So even if she was wedged down there, the next morning she would have been alive and like, you know, the, the maids would have seen her or she would have been like calling out to the maids. Well, she couldn't really, she can like moan and make noises, but remember she couldn't speak. She, I don't believe that. I don't think that's, she was either dead and wedged into the bed or she was not there at all. Those are the two scenarios. So the autopsy ruled it was an accident and that she died five to nine days beforehand of mechanical asphyxia due to obstruction of the nasal cavities and the thorax abdominal compression. Um, and remember she couldn't move her legs and she didn't have much body strength. So it's weird to me that she would even be able to wriggle herself, wriggle like all the way down to there and like somehow get jammed in between there. So to me also, I agree. Like, I don't think that she did that on her own. I don't think she died there and she was there for like five to nine days. Yeah. It, they would have found it I and agree. cadaver dogs came in or dogs came in and then there's some like controversy like were they cadaver dogs did they know what they were smelling for like maybe they didn't know what they were looking for and it's like wait they think... came in in the interim between her body discovery okay well i mean there is just like a lot of scents of hers in that room yeah but if it's a cadaver dog and there's a dead body in the room they find it 100 percent of the time yeah I, so. I would say so um, so that's really all there is to it. Um, okay. Let me give my initial theories then. There's no reason I see for like, I don't know the relationship all these people have, but I don't see any reason why the maids would do it really. And her last known sighting was the dad coming home. Right? So in cases like this, when the last known sighting is the parents, my thought is always like accident beforehand that they're trying to cover up. So like the putting them to bed that when the dad came home with the two daughters, like maybe she wasn't even alive then. That would be my first thought. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Um, so there's a lot of theories and the, the theories will open up a lot more. So we'll just, we'll touch on them for sure. So it was an accident. That's the first theory. Autopsy was correct. Paulette wriggled her way down there, but, and the heavy blankets kept the smell in for so long. She no. was down, she was down I don't buy that one. Um, I don't see a reason the maids would do it. Also, the nannies made the bed hotel style. So like they lift up the corners, they tuck the sheets under. And if they did that and her body was there, they would have found the body. Yeah. So that's why I don't, it, that theory to me is off. Um, I mean, when your child is missing and she's a little bit disabled, the first thing I would do is, maybe not the very first thing, but I would like peek around the bed for sure. Yeah, it was also weird. That's also not something I think happened is because there's urine stains on the bed. So if other people are sleeping in the bed, like, and you don't notice the lump of the baby at the bottom, at least you smell the urine, right? You, there's something off. You don't sleep in a bed that smells like urine without suspecting. There um, is urine stains though? Yeah, on the mattress. So she like peed herself at some point there, which is weird. So was that a common thing that she did? I don't know. Because if it was then that could make sense with any theory. But if it wasn't, and it was just like in a state of struggling. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then there was one medical examiner who refused to sign off on the report saying she had been there for that long. So he was thinking like she she was somehow died, but then placed there after the fact. Okay. Um, mom killed the daughter. This is another theory. So several days later, um, it was no longer... Sorry, several days later, it was no longer ruled an accident. And the attorney general announced that the mom is the number one suspect. But she actually, she stated that she was innocent, had nothing to do with her daughter's death. Hmm. And the next day, her Mauricio and the two nannies are actually just granted freedom. And they're allowed to leave the um, hotel, but not the country. So another interesting thing then is, my whole thought was parents colluded, but maybe one of them did it without the knowledge of the other. That could be an interesting thing too. I thought about that and that's a theory, but why would both of the parents not be panicked when they found out they're both just like I don't hanging. gauge much on the reactions to things because people have crazy reactions to things. I, on this one, I gauge it a lot. Um, How old is the little sister? I don't know, a couple years older. Okay. So she was unbothered by the disappearances during all of her TV appearances and never seemed to be grieving. She also on TV said, maybe Paulette is taken by aliens or Harry Potter. Even if I lose Paulette, I still have another daughter. She said that stuff? On TV. 
And then there was a recording of, because there was bugs in the apartment, the cops put without them knowing. Whoa. And there was a recording of the mom telling little Lizette not to say anything to the media or others would think they were guilty. Eh, I'm fine with that. I'm not. Then the weirdest thing to me was there were PJs that were like shown, and you can see in one of the, the media clips that the mom was showing like, hey, these are, Paul, these are Paulette's little um, PJs, and they were on the bed. And then Paulette was found in the same exact PJs. But there could also be, have been like two pairs of the PJs, right? When was this about the PJs? After? She, she was found in the same exact PJs the mom was showing on media. On media? On like TV. After the child, after all this after happened? After the disappearance. Okay. That's interesting. Could be just coincidental. I don't put much into that. What do you mean coincidental? Like they have two pairs of the same pajamas? Yeah. Oh, oh. So, okay. So she goes disappearing. There's a TV interview of Lizette, the I see. mom. I see. And then she's found in them. It's weird to have two pairs of PJs? I think PJs? it is too, but maybe it was the other girls. I don't know. Yeah. The Attorney General and Mauricio, this is another theory. Attorney General and Mauricio were really good friends. And maybe Mauricio convinced the Attorney General to say all these things about the wife to incriminate her publicly to get the heat off him. Yes, yeah, I don't love that one. The nannies did it, but there's no re real reason for that. So I don't even want to talk about that. Someone's, a lot of people saying the mom did it. Someone's saying accidental death, then family cover-up. See, with those, I don't think you ever do that. Like an accidental death and you try to cover it up. I think you just come clean about the accidental death unless you are in the wrong. I don't think you unless do. Unless it's like negligence, something like that. Um, the parents killed her for a financial gain. Another theory... So they staged a kidnapping to get money from people and they hid her somewhere in the building, either an air duct or an elevator shaft, and she died while being hidden. And when they found her, they panicked and placed her at the foot of the bed. I got to know their financial situation to go with that one, but seems unlikely. And then mom killed her on purpose because of all like the, it was financially burdening and yeah. like all the care for her. Those were the big theories. This is a tough one. What do you guys think? It's sad. Sounds like John Bonet Ramsey. Yeah, it does kind of sound like yeah, that. Yeah, it is. Compared to that. Uh, I think I would have to say. So the dad was the one who came home with her at that night, right? Mm -hmm. So last night was with the dad. Yeah, but the mom said she like tucked her in. It's hard for me to believe that just like in the middle of the night, first degree murder occurred that night from the mom like she woke up it had to either be collusion of the two yeah or i would definitely say they're both involved i don't know their relationship maybe that would help me know it better but i don't know it doesn't make a lot of sense i don't see a, a strong motive for this really because they're financially secure to where they can just like have people take care of her all day yeah but maybe they were living above their means that's possible yeah Mom's the killer, a lot of people say, and a couple of people say it was a nanny. All right, well, the nanny, so for the nanny one, I'll touch on it. So there's no real reason they would do this. They were being paid really well. They were sister, sisters that got to live together in a really nice house. And when the case was closed and it was ruled an accident, they, the nannies and not the parents, were actually the ones that insisted the case be reopened. Okay. So like they obviously cared about her. So it seems to me like it's 100% the parents that. Yeah. And it's just whether they were both involved. I think a bare minimum is the mom was involved, right? I don't know. I guess there's a scenario where it could have just been the dad. He was the last to have seen her. The mom just acted really weird on camera and stuff. But the mom, why would the mom say that she did kiss her goodnight? So she was covering for her husband? I guess I don't know. I'm not using the serving fork, sorry. It's okay. What are you eating? We got barbecue, pulled pork, brisket. I'm gonna make an omelet with the leftovers tomorrow. Um, we had like some mushroom stuff mega made. We got some cheese, I don't think I'm gonna have any. And then I got this keto bar. Peppermint chocolate. Chocolate mint. Okay. We've been wanting to do wings 
but we're not I don't think we're ready to just like <coughs> gobble down with our fingers just yet on camera we ordered it from a takeout place we yeah didn't make it ourselves. it's a really good place near us is this a mukbang yeah but this is the only place we've tried next time we should do something different this is just guaranteed to be good you know agree with mom Harry Potter for sure good one Carrie I guess they could have hired someone too. To come in? Yeah. And do what? Kill her and then wait and then stuff her in the bed later? The part that is kind of weird to me is that... I don't think she was there all that time. Someone would have found her. The nanny. It's, it's weird to me that the parents, if they did commit this crime, they would put the body there. Because putting the body there makes it most likely... That to they be did someone it, in the or house. Or it could have been an accident. I guess they were maybe going for accident. But if the body's found or is never found, or it's just like in a random ditch, that's more in favor of the parents, I they feel like. They could have easily just gotten away with it because the cops obviously didn't put a lot of effort into it. Yeah, that too. If they just like, <laughs> yeah, threw her in a ditch or something. Sorry to say that. Does anyone know of any recipes where butter is the main ingredient? No. No. I thought of like buttered mushrooms if you use more butter than mushrooms. Yeah, maybe some cakes. Like a pound cake type of thing. Butter coffee. Have companies contacted you about branding their products with Keto Connect? No. Actually, just recently a few have wanted to like make... Collabs. Collab, like where we make a flavor for them or something. But that's pretty much it. One time someone asked us to like start a supplement line with their, like they would get us all the products and stuff and like make it for us. We would just have the name. Someone a long time ago asked to buy Keto Connect. Yeah. Our food blog. But it was like, uh, can I just tell them about how they want to transition it? So yeah. funny. We were like, well, you know, it's just not like a random food blog. We're the faces of it. So how are you going to do that? And he was like, you know, like over time. <laughs> I'll swap my wife in for Mega, and then it'll be Matt and That's his, not what he did. his That's wife, not what he said. and then again, and then later on, I'll swap Matt out for me. No, that's what he said. What did he, he said? He would swap it. Yeah, but like you have to do it slowly over time. But it'd be like super awkward. At some point, there'd be like Matt and some other woman. I was like, she has to no. be Indian. See, this is that is all stuff that you added into the story. <laughs> There was never a point where it was like one of them and one of us. I'm sure there was. No. You didn't say that? <laughs> oh, never mind. I always make up funnier Wait, stories. Wait, was his wife Indian? No. Oh. They were just white people, which would work. Was they... it Jonathan Carrion? <laughs> Good one. It's a real inside joke on the channel. We appreciate it. This pork okay. pork is so good. The case reminded me of Casey Anthony. Oh, we got to do that one soon. That one's pretty interesting. I actually have to use the restroom. Can I do that? Yeah. Thoughts on green juice supplement drink? Eh, I don't take it. I don't see any need to take it. Um, if your diet is not that great, then maybe it's beneficial. But otherwise, if you're eating good foods most of the time, you probably don't need it. Butter cake, that's a recipe that uses a lot of butter. Yep, we got that one on our food blog. You guys think a dedicated keto market would be successful? A lot of people ask stuff like this, like keto restaurants, keto grocery stores. I don't see a reason why you would limit yourself to just keto when it's so easy to have other offerings as well. I don't see a point to having just a keto market. I mean, a keto market, that's like a butcher shop basically, right? Or And like some keto like crackers and stuff just like some some of that type of stuff but i think there's a lot of places that do just like paleo keto whole foods type of type of markets that's probably the best idea do kylie jenner i don't think she has a mystery does she she's definitely not dead are you done yeah can i have the cheese yeah okay we are ready. Where's the mic? Cheese knife. I'm gonna make so much crinkling noise. 
So it's slightly warm too. Which kind is that? Comfy. Okay guys, here we go. Today, we're going to be talking about Leah Roberts. And this is a relatively popular mystery. So, um, around the year, a little before the year 2000, Leah Roberts is attending college at North Carolina State and a tragic event happens in her life. Her mother passes away from heart disease. So this is very traumatic to Leah. She takes time off school, tries to find herself a little bit. As soon as she returns to school, a year later or so, she gets in a severe car accident where she almost dies. She has like fractured legs, like a lot of, a pretty crazy accident. So she takes time off from that again. So that's a couple of like, you gaps. know, a couple of gaps, but also a couple of incidences where she's just like depressed, upset, questioning her mortality and stuff, you know? Yeah. Her mortality. Yeah. Just like life. What is life? That type of thing. Okay. Existential a crisis. She returns to school again and she wants to live life to the fullest now. So she studies abroad in Spain for a year. Classic, like, I want to live life to the fullest. Oh my right? god, something happens to her in Spain? No, this is, it's in America. But, so she comes back from her, her tenure in Spain and her father passes away. Like of natural causes? I don't know how he passed away, but I think something somewhat natural. But like unexpectedly. Yeah, kind of unexpected. And she's supposed to go to a work study trip in Costa Rica. A few weeks after her father dies, she decides like she's really depressed and everything, but she goes anyway, has a, has a fine time. And an important note to this whole story, I don't know much about this author, but Jack Kerouac. Yeah. You know of him? Yeah. So she is, begins like avidly reading his books. Okay. She's very, she becomes very interested in him. And I guess he talks about a lot about just like living in the moment, like that type of stuff, right? Yeah. Have you read any of his books? No. Okay. My Kelsey has read all of them though. Ninety percent of the books I've read are by J.R.R. Tolkien. March 9th, two thousand. I'm kidding. Mine are like my diary that Your I diary. reread. You read it a lot. Yeah. Have you? When's the last time you wrote in it? Um, probably like two weeks ago. Okay. March 9th, two thousand. Leah talks on the phone with her sister. Has a totally normal conversation. She makes plans with her roommate to babysit the following day. Okay. And things are a little bit suspicious when Leah does not show up to babysit the next day. Her so, roommate's baby? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's her roommate's baby. And two days later, other friends start calling... Oh my gosh. Other friends start calling Leah's roommate to see if she has seen Leah because she's missed a bunch of plans with a bunch of friends, so... You know, calls are coming in at a steady pace at this point. They're like, hey, where's Leah? I was supposed to do this thing with her today. And at this point, her roommate begins to investigate a little bit. Okay. So her roommate calls Leah's sister. Okay. And she asks if she's seen her. She has not. Because her sister is like pretty involved in her life. And they begin calling everyone in their contact to see if anyone has seen her. Just no control of your limbs. And so, life to the fullest. so they get together and they just start calling everyone in their contacts, basically, that could know where Leah is. And they call them all and no one has seen her. So at this point, you know, the sister is really worried. She goes to Leah's house to investigate her room and just like see what's going on there. And it appears this all the signs are of someone leaving voluntarily. There's okay. like a missing travel bag. A lot of her clothes are missing, like the clothes she liked to wear a lot. Those are all gone. Okay. Enough to be noticeable, and it seems like she just left. And she'd been through like a lot in her life. Maybe she was just like, you know, F it. I'm going to like go out and live my life. Yeah. There's cuts on this table now. Why? I don't know. And uh, the sister, by now the sister's worried, and she files a missing persons report. This is about four days after Leah left, like her last known sighting, the, the phone call with her sister. But the police, obviously, she's like an adult. She she's, seems like she's fine, so they don't How have... How old is she again? Like, in, at, 
college ish age, like nineteen. Yeah, I think 20. she's like she's twenty 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 ish. Okay. So uh, I got signed up. Okay. Wait. Oh no. I got signed out of my document. One second. It doesn't have my password. Would you guys do your show on cable? Um, can someone ask us to do it on cable? Yes. What would it be though? It would be like 2 a.m. slot PBS. Um, What's my password? What are we talking about? We are doing two crime cases. Um, Matt, tell us about psyllium husk. Do you guys use it? We no. use it in like baked goods if like we have like a really good low carb roll recipe that we use it in, but we don't like use it to drink it for fiber sources. Yeah, you don't need to add fiber. That would be also like not the way to do it. Like you can just eat food for fiber, like veggies. Okay, we're back. Are you guys on Netflix? She mentioned something. No, we're definitely not on Netflix. <laughs> we have Netflix. Okay, so missing persons report is filed. Police don't really have much to do. They can't really follow up with much. It's just like a random 20-year-old drove off, okay. you know? So, yeah. Sister goes back to her room to look around. This is a few days later, and she finds a note on a cluttered dresser. From her? She opens it. It is from Leah. Is it her writing? It's her writing. On the front is a hand-drawn picture of a Cheshire cat. Do you know what that is? Yeah. It's what? like red and like... It's from Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Like that exact face from Alice like in Wonderland, bigger. basically. So creepy. Yeah. But apparently, like, I've only seen it a couple times. Actually, I saw the new Alice in Wonderland with, like, the queen. Have you saw that one? I haven't seen it, but... It's pretty good, I'd say. Ew. Really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't like Alice in Wonderland as a movie in general. Yeah. It's too, like, out of the box. It was pretty out of the box, but basically um, the Cheshire cat, it like disappears and reappears, just like it's always in and out of existence. Ew, creepy. So maybe that's a signal or a symbol. But she's disappearing for now? Yeah. Inside is cash with a note saying, this is to cover the bills when I'm gone. It's one month's worth of rent. Okay. So that gives a little bit of a time frame, right? And we're so also she's... assuming she just up and left on her own. Nothing yeah. to worry about. Yeah. And in the note, there is this message. It says, remember, everyone is together in thoughts and prayers and time passes quickly. Have faith in me, yourself, and everyone. What do you make of that? Remember, everyone in, is together in thoughts and prayers and time passes quickly. Have faith in me, yourself, and everyone. Yeah, that's like, I'm going to kill myself talk. Is it? Everyone's together in thoughts and prayers, like... It doesn't matter if I'm alive or dead. We're all together, kind okay. of. To me, it's just like, you're trying too hard. You think you're cool. You're not that cool. No, that to me is like someone's depressed and like wanting to kill themselves. And then on the side of the message, it says, I'm not suicidal. I'm the opposite. Remember Jack Kerouac. Okay, so she's suicidal. Ex that's my first thought exactly. You don't tell people you're not suicidal ever. You don't tell people like you're not something when you just obviously are. Because yeah. you're, you're trying to like... I have never told anyone I'm not suicidal. And if I did, I would, I would think it would make them more so question if I am. Well, it's like you're getting defensive without needing to. It's like, why are you defending yourself? I didn't say you were suicidal. You're thinking it, not me. You know? Yeah, exactly. That was my thought too. Okay. So, interestingly enough, when uh, the big accident happened years back, the sister was granted power of attorney. Okay, so she good. utilizes this because even though she knows her sister is just Away left on her own, yeah. yeah, she's going to do some digging, see what's going on, so she can check banking records and stuff. I, I, I don't really know how you, you can just like be like, I'm attorney of gen a general, what is it called? Power of attorney, so I can do anything. This person's not here. You don't have any proofs are gone or anything? I don't know. I have to look into that. Okay. okay. But she, she looked at her bank records. That's all I know. And she learns that Leah left the same day that they had that phone call. Mm -hmm. So the, to me, right away, there's like, oh, this is, this is someone I can't even really know anymore. Because she calls me like everything's fine. And then she, she knows she's leaving. But do we know what happened on that call for real? We don't. We just have the sister's account, I guess. You're right. And 
her debit card shows purchases just like a standard Western travel. So she's in North Carolina on March 9th. On March 10th, there's a gas fill up in Tennessee. Okay. And on March 13th, there's a gas fill up in Oregon. So she goes three days without filling up her gas? Is that normal? Tennessee to Oregon. I don't think you could make it that far. That's a good point. I didn't think of that. You definitely can't make it that far. I don't know the distance. And that's like pure driving to get from Tennessee to Oregon in, in three days. Maybe she that's has like gas in her trunk or something. No, no way. She wouldn't have gas in her trunk. Why? That's only like a gallon or two. You can't have like you 10 can't? gallons. No. Oh. I don't know that. Uh, so yeah, that's a good point. So she could have some other kind of payment method that we don't have tracking on right where she used someone else's was she with someone else i don't think so so when the sister sees this she concludes that her sister's fine she just needs to give her some time let her do her thing figure out stuff for herself that makes sense if you feel like she's alive and okay but like I, is she calling and texting like i would need contact at least no she's not mm -mm. but if the sister were to keep oh, looking cash pay with cash pay with cash that too but if the sister were to keep... Oh, she actually did. Did I say that? No, we'll get to... Oh, yeah. Um, she withdrew $3,000 from the bank that day. Okay. So she definitely had cash. So that's... She could have easily just been using cash. And she didn't give any of that money to the, the note for the month's rent? She might have given some, but she had a lot of money She had left. money on her. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if the sister, the sister stopped looking, she just decided, you know, my sisters need some time, mm -hmm. but March 13th, the, or the Oregon gas fill up, that was the last transaction transaction ever made on the debit card. Okay. So March 19th, the sister's birthday, she's expecting for sure. Me and my sister were best friends. I'm going to hear something from her. That's okay. what she's expecting. Instead, there's contact from the Bellham. Or no, no, there's contact from the local police station leaving a note in her door saying that she needs to contact the Bellham Washington police station because her sister's car has been found. Ooh. That's Good always a bad gift. sign. Yeah. So the Washington sheriff says that one day earlier a couple was jogging and they found the car. It was down the side of a hill. <coughs> And blankets and clothing were everywhere, and there was like easily visible personal information, like passport, wallet, all that type of stuff, just like right on the passenger seat, you know, just out in the open. Yeah. And there's a little bit of it's unclear whether it was like homeless situation with the blanket on the windows, that type of thing, you know, or if it was just like the crash and there was blankets all everywhere because of the there was a crash. Oh, I would think she's sleeping in her car. That's kind of what I, my thoughts was on that. And it seemed, though, like the scene that no one would really leave a car because no one would leave passport wallet right there. Yeah, it seems like maybe her shit was raided when she was taken by people. But there was money, too. There was $2,400. Mm. So you would have taken that. Sometimes people just want, like, to kill, right? What? Yeah, like every, like Ted Bundy types, every once in a while there's a Yeah. Killer. More people, people want to rob and stuff, though, I think. And when the sister hears this, her and her brother, there's a, there's a brother in the mix now, they immediately fly to Washington to help with the search. Okay. That makes sense. And what is learned by the police investigation as they start digging into the car, the vehicle was going uphill at 30 to 40 miles per hour, pretty steep incline. It went off the side of the road and it rolled end over end. I think that's like this, end over end. And inside of the car, no blood or sign of injury. So she wasn't in the car. She jumped out before it rolled. Seat belt was not extended in the way that it would be if you got into if an accident. In yeah. No damage to the steering wheel or windshield from any kind of person in the car. That's typical of crashes. No footprints leading away from the crash site. But if she wanted to like disappear, which is my initial thought, she would take her, the money at the very least, right? She wouldn't just like make a fake wreckage and then like leave with nothing. You'd think so, right? Yeah. Police check with local hospitals for anyone matching her description and they don't find anyone. Okay. So at this point it appears she was definitely not in the car. Not in the crash, yeah. 
So all that's really left to do, there's no real leads or anything. The police just continue looking at the car and they find a small box with a ticket to the movie American Beauty. That's a good movie. It's also kind of a sad movie and I could see you being in like a suicidal mind state afterwards. Yeah, of course. Just like the mundaneness of life. He, well, he kills himself. Oh, does he at the at end? At the end, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. She went to see this movie on the 13th in Washington. The last thing she did. Yeah. So 13th in Washington, she sees the movie. She got gas five hours away, and this was the one that was on the debit card. So assuming she filled up gas there, she drove five hours. That's basically a full tank of gas. Okay. I don't know that. But... Yeah. So you're giving Julius cheese. Yeah. <laughs> so police start placing missing persons posters around town, and this is when stuff gets interesting. Oh, the neighbor killed him. It was, he didn't kill himself. I remember. They're in the gym, right? In like his garage gym. Oh, I don't know. It's kind of coming back to me. Okay, go on, sorry. The neighbor kills him? I can't remember. Is there some kind of death or something? So, a person at the restaurant next to the movie theater said she recognized Leah. She sat down at the bar and had dinner, and she was sitting between two other guys that she did not come with. I don't get why, like, we travel alone with lots of money and sleep in our car and, like, try to be cool and Neil Hirsch into the wild style people. Like, don't do that. Yeah. That would be my takeaway, too. Ever. Like, there's no need to go hiking in, I like, try a to remote s- country by yourself to be cool and have cool pictures. I like, know. you don't need that nonsense, guys. I try to sympathize with her, but I, I do agree it's in the realm of just trying too hard, like... There's no, you can find yourself at your current home and just like take pride in, in getting better grades in school and like, you know, you that type of stuff. You don't need to like go on a big exactly. adventure to like find yourself. But all yourself. these kids these days go on big adventures Yeah, 20 year themselves. old, that's like the prime age to be like, I need to do something crazy to find myself. So another person calls in that was sitting next to Leah that day at the bar. And he was one of two, the two men. And he sat by her. He said he didn't have much interaction with her, but he says the other man was talking with her the whole time. Do we know anything about the men? Like young, old? We don't know much about them. But based on uh, like receipts at the, the restaurant or like credit card transactions, the police tra- tracked down the other man. And he admits to sitting next to her and having a conversation. He says they talked about Jack Kerouac. So to me, that's at least pretty concise validation that that was her that was really her and after they chatted she ended up leaving with a man named barry that's what this guy says the second guy was he one of the two men she was with no barry's a a third guy so she's just like living on the edge (laughs) maybe so immediately police begin to suspect guy number two because the first guy didn't mention anything about barry and guy number two it seems like he just made this guy up so police oh, believe see. Barry is completely fabricated. That would make sense if you like did something to her and you just, yeah, you want to get, okay. And also I assume the police are like interacting with the two men and you can get a read on some people. And they're like, one guy, you're just a normal guy. You're a crazy yeah, guy. That you type can of tell, thing. yeah, yeah. So now, a few days later, I think it's a few days. It could be a few weeks. Police just going back to the, to the car. That's all they really have to go off of. They conclude she left everything behind in the car. She has no clothes. She has no money. She has nothing. That would make sense. Because they're just taking inventory now. They probably like cross-checked with her room. And they have a good idea. Like she has nothing. They find her most prized possession still in the car. Her mother's ring. And everyone they talk to says she would never leave the ring no matter what. Yeah, her mom died. It was a big part of her life. Yeah. So now police begin a large scale search of the area, thinking there might be a body they're looking for because it's obvious that she, it seems like she didn't leave on her own. From the diner or whatever? Just from, from the fact that everything's still in the car. Okay. And at this point, the case goes cold. Hmm. Seven years later, though, a new detective gets the case because the old detective retired. 
and he takes an interest in it because I'm sure when you're a new detective, you just get thrown a bunch of cases. Well, something catches your eye for sure. Maybe the, as a daughter or something. Yeah, so this one caught his eye and he wants to look at the mechanics of the car. How did it accelerate uphill if we think no one was in it? No, we think she was in it and then she rolled out before it fell off the edge. So is that what you think? Yeah, that's what happened. Most people are, th most people are thinking she was not in it at all. Maybe you put like a big stone on the... So give me some of your theories right now. What are, where's your mind at? I feel like she just stepped, she like went off grid. She like wanted to get away and she, she jumped out of the car. She thought like they'll find the car and they'll think I'm dead or like someone took me and like I can just go do my thing and like be off. Because people like leave and they go and live in San Francisco homeless and like yeah. you never know. It seems like it's within the realm of possibilities for sure. She's just a wild card at this point. She could do anything. This is the first time I think like she just left. Okay. As opposed to like she was killed. I think these last few points might change your mind. Also, Mermaid Girl, thank you so much for the donation. Love your recipes. You two are awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Mermaid Girl. Cool name. Yeah. Okay, so the cover on the starter relay, which I don't know what that is, but it's some car components, it was removed. So that would allow it to accelerate with no one in it. This takes mechanical knowledge. No, oh. this takes this takes mechanical knowledge. Unless she was like looking stuff up on YouTube, which was just in its infancy back then. I don't think she but did But you this. wouldn't be like, how do I find a starter relay remover? You know, like how, yeah. you wouldn't even know what it's called. Yeah. So, and she didn't have a computer or a smartphone or anything. So it seems like someone with mechanical knowledge helped her with this or did it themselves. And the guy number two from the bar, he had experience as a mechanic and in the past seven years, he had moved to Canada. Mm. So he did something out of Canada and had to move to Canada to get away, no extradition maybe? Well, he might have done something in America, the murder of Leah Roberts. Oh, this is seven years later. Yeah. Okay. I forgot it was in America. Fingerprints are found under the hood. Police run the tests on them and they do not match guy number two. When they don't match anyone we know of? No. But to me, that's not a big deal because mechanics and stuff, like people reach under the hood of cars. But the only ones they found would be like the most recent ones, right? No. Because under the hood, it's like all oily and stuff. I feel like you could have fingerprints there for years. And maybe he was like wearing gloves or something. That too. Or maybe he made her like open it. He could have been wearing gloves. Okay, so there's really four theories. That's the end of the case right there, basically. That's yeah. all we know. She's never been seen again. What do you guys think? He wore gloves, though. Um, she wasn't driving, in my opinion. I think the guy ditched the car to take the focus off murder. Yeah. He def killed her. Um, That's not how cars work, says someone. <laughs> Is it still cr it's still crazy that money was left behind? Aliens only option. Okay. She, she was crossing the country, finding herself. She met a bad dude at the end. Like you're always gonna meet a bad dude. Don't think you're not. No, you're not. You're not always gonna meet. You're a bad always dude. don't go on road trips alone with a ton of money and your passport and sleep in your car. Just don't do it. Okay, so one theory would be a manic episode. In manic episodes, they can be brought about by like she really. Have any, like, she has no. She has no history of anything. No, but it's not in it. Manic episodes can be brought about mm -hmm. by life traumas, like the passing of her two parents, stuff like that. So the manic episode happened when, like, before she wrote the Cheshire Cat note, and then she manically episode and mm -hmm. bounced. Or it happened during her... I mean, you can write stuff like that when you're in a manic episode. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, was she in the manic episode for as long as she it was It could traveling? have just struck her that day and she's just like, I'm out of here, bye. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how long it takes to get out of one if you're, like, not on medication, if it's your first one, but I don't think that's it. Number two is suicide. What is, yeah, marry her, Matt. You don't want to get your lunch cut. What does that mean? I don't know. Don't want to get your lunch cut? I don't know what that means. Um, so suicide. suicide. If we didn't have so much info on guy number two kind of like fitting certain characteristics and actual evidence of her being at the, the restaurant. You also don't need to take out 3K for a suicide mission. But I think she was in a suicidal state of mind just evidenced by the note, all the things that happened, the fact that she's well, that's randomly why she left going in the first cross place. country. Yeah. To find herself. 
So if like we didn't have so much info on the guy, I would say suicide is a prime candidate, but seems unlikely now. Number three would be that she's still out there. Okay, that I feel like it's a toss up between that and this man. I don't think it's a toss up. Number four is foul play. Guy number two, I think that's probably the strong favorite. Just by the fact that like ketonement. What? Also be rude. Don't help any good looking strangers do anything. Don't even make eye contact. I'm in agreement. Except I feel like we've talked about like pulling over and helping people before. We almost gave that man a ride in Atlanta. Yeah. But he's like walking with a cane. That could have been like luring us. Didn't we ask him and he said no? Yeah. One time we asked the guy and he was like, No, I like walking and it was like really a he was in a mile suit. Walk. Yeah. Yeah. He was very old. But I think foul play is the most likely. Just because guy number two, he has experience as a mechanic. He moved to Canada. He created... Barry. Barry. And he didn't come forth with the information. The cops had to go and, like, find him. Yeah. I think all the stuff in the car that was left and thrown around is because the killer didn't take the time to look and needed to dish the car. Yeah. Yeah. So then the theory would be Barry... Or no. The guy number two killed her... Like, met her at the restaurant, killed her, and then disposed of the car by, like, fixing it, flying it up the hill, crashing it, and then invented Barry, basically. Yeah. I think she gave Guy two money to help her out. She disappeared and lived homeless. Moving to Canada was just coincidence. Seems like wishful thinking to me. <laughs> but, but if maybe. she gave the guy the money, it was still, why was it in the car that was ditched? Yeah, I think she obviously had some emotional trauma and wasn't in the right state of mind, which could have left her vulnerable for foul play. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you're in a bad state of mind, someone is being nice and wants to talk to you, and like, also knows Jack Kerouac, then you want to engage. Yeah. That seems like, yeah, something could easily have happened, and I don't... Every time we end this, like, Murder, She Ate... I'm just like, why do these things happen? Drug deal going wrong? No. I don't know that there was much evidence of her being on drugs, but I wouldn't doubt it. But drug deal going wrong? I don't really see how it would go wrong. Um, you came with the case today, though. I've never heard of that one. Really? Yeah. Oh. That was a good one. Yeah. Yours is good. We always have... I feel like there's... There's so many good cases, good in the sense that like very just open up for inter opened up for interpretation, like so many good theories and those are the best ones with the good equal chances it could have gone either way. Yeah, it's it's tough though. There's also DNA found of a man on her clothing, and it hasn't been tested yet, but we have technology now that can test it. So maybe there will be like a break in this case at some point. This was 2000 what? 2000. But the the recent updates with the uh, like the ignition of the car or whatever that was two thousand nine, okay, or two thousand seven maybe. Yeah, that's it, guys. It's crazy. That her body is in a mile radius of the car. So they searched. The yeah, they searched, and from her car accident, she had a metal metal rod in her leg. So, when they're searching for her body, they're using, like, metal detectors and stuff. What? That's just funny and weird to me. So, I think they're, they're, it makes searching for her easier, so I think it's not within a mile of her car. That's interesting. Um, but that guy, I'm assuming if you just kill a random girl, you, you've killed more than one person, right? I don't know. You, t you take the opportunity as it strikes. Maybe it was his first opportunity and he hasn't done it since because like, Are, it, think? it was really easy to get away with this one. It's not always that easy. Are there people that just kill one random like opportunistic person and stop? I don't know. I feel like there's got to be. Um, 2000, sophomore in high school over here. Ketonement. <laughs> I graduated in 2007. Wait, yeah, 2007. Someone just keeps typing drug deal gone wrong. <laughs> I feel like you could say that at the end of every case almost. 
Thank you. Was so upset you might have canceled MSA when there was no video last week. No, if anything, we'd cancel Keto Connect and keep MSA going. Yeah. Do you take magnesium before bed like melatonin? Yeah, I like to take it with dinner or a little after. I think magnesium, it makes the most sense to me to take minerals with meals. Because, I mean, when in nature would you really just be getting minerals outside of meals? So our, our food's lower in magnesium now. So adding like a, some magnesium supplement that you take with a meal, that seems like it makes sense. Are you guys still drinking raw milk? We use raw heavy cream and we use raw milk to make yogurt. So yes, and this is raw cheese right here. I made some raw milk yogurt for Mega the other week and she didn't drink it. Raw, eat it? Eat it. I drank like, a, I, ate, I ate like a quarter of it and then we left. And so it's definitely spoiled, but I haven't checked. Yeah, she went to the movie in Bellingham, the last place she was seen. I wonder if the, the situation has happened anywhere in Canada or where guy number two has lived. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think... Keep an eye on him? You got to keep an eye it's on him, for sure. It's just a lot of resources. Yeah, I guess it is. Man, I always think it'd be really fun to be like a cop that's building cases. You got like the whole clip art on the wall with like lines everywhere. You could do that for so many. You could. Lots of animals lick rocks for minerals. Yeah, I guess. We're humans. <laughs> I guess like deer do salt licks and stuff. That's true. Um, Is that it? Yeah. I guess that's it for today, guys. This was a blast. Again, every single case I have done has been suggested by one of you beautiful people. So keep leaving suggestions because it's impossible to find a good case without you. Yep. And Matt always finds, Matt's like listened to all of them. So he already knows what he's going to do next week, I bet. No, I don't. I need suggestions. I might do a big dog next week. Like Should maybe. we ask them? Should we do a big dog together? We can ask. You want us to do a big dog do together like next week? Do you like two separate ones? Or do you want us to do like Adnan or Avery or Mara Murray? Or West Memphis 3. West Memphis 3. That one's oh, so gruesome. Yeah. Comment below after you guys watch this video um, with cases or if you want us to do a big dog. Because we've been thinking, we've never done this yet, where we just both, both, both. Both. Both do one single case that's really big and in-depth. People drink mineral water. Yeah, now they drink mineral water, mineral water, but back then... Well, people, yeah, there was more minerals in the drinking water back then. That's true. What do you see, buddy? Uh, big dog, big dog, big dog. What, what is, is a big, big dog? dog? <laughs> big dog's like... Stephen Avery or, um, you know, Mara Murray, like one of those really big cases that you really have to unpack. So two of us would make it better than just like one of us. And it would take the entire hour. I think it would be good because we always have uh, kind of contrasting viewpoints. Yeah. So I guess we'll do a big dog. So decide which one, right? Avery. Yeah. Comment below which big dog. Yeah. I only. I love Adnan. I love talking about Adnan. Me too. We could do Adnan. It's just been so well covered. Like, cereal is flawless. I would so. just listen to cereal all week again. That would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Oh, Jody Arias, too. Okay. That's a good one. I like the the mother killer people. What was her... What was that little... Is that the little... That's not the little girl, right? That was No, fun. Jody Arias is the one who drowned her kids, I think. Oh, yeah. I think. I'm not Casey sure. Casey Anthony. That's the one I'm thinking Madeline of. Madeline McCann is a good one for a big dog, too. Casey that Anthony was just obviously the mom. Yeah. Her diary and stuff. Okay, I, we're getting into it now. Madeline McCann is the, the first case I heard where I was like, whoa, I really love this. I don't know who that is. I love hearing about this. You know the one the, where they were, the parents were on vacation in, like, England, and they were all out drinking, and they came back, and their daughter's missing. And I told you the theory of, like, the parents dosing the kid with... Some kind of drug so uh, they could go party. Yeah. That was that one. All right. That's Genghis it, guys. Khan. Genghis Khan. All right, guys. We love you. See ya.